Hi there, this is Jesse with OEM Auto Parts Co. Today we'll be upgrading a factory radio to a factory navigation system in a 2013 Expedition. In order to do so, you'll need a flathead and a Phillips screwdriver. You'll need a plastic panel removal tool, a socket, an extension, and a 9, 7mm, and 5.5mm socket. To remove the radio, you'll first need to move the dash bezel and the lower bezel filler piece. Neither of them have screws, they both just clip in. You'll want to remove the lower dash bezel filler first. Then you'll want to remove the dash bezel. You'll want to disconnect the two plugs on the top of the dash bezel and set this aside. Once you have the four bolts out of the radio, the radio slides right out. You can then disconnect all the connections behind the radio and remove this. You'll need to take your antenna adapter and plug that in. You can then tuck a portion of these wires away behind the dash. You can now connect the sink T harness to the factory vehicle harness. Also the brick kit amplifier has a T harness. At this time you can now connect the T harness for the brick kit and we will be running these wires to underneath the steering column by the knee bolster. This knee bolster panel will need to be removed. There are three seven millimeter screws on the bottom holding it on and the top is just clipped into place. Once you have that panel removed, you'll need to attach your amplifier to the knee bolster metal support panel. In order to do so, you can use metal tapping screws, bolts, or zip ties. You'll then need to plug your amplifier in to the T-harness that we ran to underneath the knee bolster. Once you have this done, you can reassemble the knee bolster. As you can see, I've mounted my amplifier using a few metal tapping screws. If your vehicle does not have Sony or THX sound, You'll just need to run this wire behind the radio and connect it to the T-harness of the amplifier. If your vehicle does have Sony or THX sound, you'll need to cut off the yellow and red wires. You will need to run the yellow wire to pin 16 and the red wire to pin 17 on the 24 pin radio connector C24A as shown in the instruction book. If sync cannot hear your voice, you'll need to proceed to procedure number two in the instructions. That would be removing the center console and running the XP2 harness. In order to remove the center console, you will need to first remove this rubber bin liner. Once you have that removed, you want to remove the 7 millimeter bolt underneath that liner. You will want to remove this chrome shift knob bezel. In order to do so, you will want to pry up on it. There's two clips located here and two clips located here. Once you have this unclipped, you can set this aside. This whole piece right here lifts up and unclips. Once you have this piece loose, you will have to insert the key into the ignition, turn the car on, hold your foot on the brake, pull the shift lever back, and then remove this piece. Once this piece is removed, you can set it to the side, put the shift lever back in the park, and shut the car back off. To remove the center console, you will need to remove this piece of plastic here covering up some screws. It's a filler piece around the accessory tray. In order to remove it, just pry this up. Set this aside. Once you have the plastic filler piece removed, you can shut the accessory center console tray and remove the cup holder assembly. In order to do so, take the rubber cup hole linings out, firmly grasp the cup holder assembly and pull up. It pops right out. You can now set this aside. In order to remove the center console side skirts, there are seven screws per side. There are three seven millimeter screws located along the top of the center console side filler pieces. There are also two 5.5 millimeter screws holding the side filler pieces to the accessory tray. And another two 10 millimeter screws down the side console further. You'll want to remove a plastic cover up front to access this screw and the back screw will be accessed by pushing the seat all the way forward. 
After you have all the screws holding the side pieces in, you'll want to remove the rear electrical connection port. This pops right out. Once you have all the bolts removed for the sides of the center console, they slide right out. You want to set both of these to the side. Once you have the two side skirts off the center console, there are just two more 8mm screws holding the center console to the dash. They're located down in here. You'll need to remove these and the whole dash will lift up and back. Once you have your center console lifted up a little bit, you'll be able to disconnect the plug into the MySync module. You want to undo two little clips and remove the shroud. You'll set this aside for right now. At this point, you want to run your T-harness with the red and blue wires with the pins. These two pins will be going into this connector in location 12 and 13. The red pin will be going in 12 and the blue pin will be going into 13. You can start counting by the top and work your way over. It'll be labeled on really tiny numbers on either side of the pin. Once you have these red and blue wires inserted into the connector, you can put the shroud back on and plug this back into the sync module. Once you have your wire ran for your sync module, you can then begin to reassemble your center console back together. You will now need to remove this old module and replace it with the new one. In order to remove this, insert your panel key or a flathead screwdriver behind it and pop it right out. You'll unplug the clip, plug your new one back in, and snap your new one back into place. You'll want to take your Sirius XM GPS antenna splitting harness from your factory end and connect the two ends into the radio. You'll then want to connect the rear view camera connector, the big main power connector, the MySync and audio connector. If you have your entertainment, this slot here may be used. And then finally the AM FM antenna. That will be plugged into this end slot here. I will have to do so once the radio is in the dash a little bit. Once you have the radio in place, you can reinstall the four screws and put the dash bezel back together. Once you have your dash bezel snapped back into place, you want to insert the key and turn the vehicle on. You'll want to give the radio a minute to power up. Once the radio powers up, you want to drive around for a little bit to allow the GPS system to sync. Once the GPS system syncs, it'll automatically populate your location on the map. Once it detects your location, you can begin and draw using your new navigation system.